Hey guys, it's here and welcome to Python tutorial number 20. Today we're going to be looking at the first half of string methods, okay? Uh, so we're just going to do this pretty quickly. Uh, hopefully you'll understand everything that we cover in this tutorial. Um, so first I'm going to make a sample string that I'll be using for um, most of the method examples. I'll just have it as hello world lowercase, okay? Now the first uh, method we have is the capitalize method. Now if we test this out, capitalize, there we go, we can see um, what it does is it capitalizes it as if it's um, a sentence. Now don't go thinking that even if you have full stops in between, whoops, let's take out hello world, even if you do something like that, whoops, uh, let me just copy and paste that. Uh, it still only capitalizes the first word in the string because it doesn't read through and check if there are uh, periods or anything. So capitalize um, capitalizes the first word in the string. Okay. The next we have is the center method, and I'm just going to copy this. So I can just paste it in there, and then for each different method, I can type in it separately. Uh, so center. Now, as we can see here, we have a width and a fill character. We'll talk about that in a sec. For now, we're just going to talk about width. Say we get a, give it a width of 50 and run that. Now we can see that uh, the string is, uh, our original string, has been placed between a whole bunch of spaces. And that's because we specified a width of 50, so it said center the current string um, in 50 characters and then fill the rest with the fill character and by default the fill character is a space. So center we supplied a width and it puts the, our original string into um, the center of that width. Okay. Now I want you to know that both uh, the capitalize one, the capitalize method and the center method are not in place methods. Okay. They don't edit the string in place. Let me just change my string back actually. There we go. Okay, so they don't edit the string in place, they return something. So if you actually want to edit the variable my string, you have to say my string equals my string dot uh, and then center 50 or whatever. Okay, and then if we look at my string now, it's like so. Okay. Now, um, the center method also allows us to supply the fill character, which is the character which is used to fill in any empty spaces. So we could have an exclamation mark, for instance, and it fills it in with exclamation marks. If we had, uh, I don't think this can be a string, let's try. No, it, it can only be uh, one single character, it can't be more than one. But yeah, so you get the gist of that really. It can be any character you give it, but only one character still. Okay, so the next method we have is the count method. Now this, if we... actually I can just do it like this, can I? Um, this takes a substring and um, also optionally a start and an end for the search. Uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory, so I won't cover that in depth, but yeah. So it takes a substring, and then it counts the number of occurrences of that substring. So say we gave it the substring L. It's a substring, even though it's a one character, it's still a string. Uh, so we gave it the character L, and it finds three occurrences, because in Hello World there's one, two, and three Ls, okay. And we can give it uh, a bigger substring, we could say... Um, well, if we did something, there's not really any occurrences of something with more than just one character. But if we have, like, LL, then it finds one occurrence of that, because in Hello, there's a double L. And if we give it uh, LO, there's one, because at the end of Hello, and you get the gist. The next one we have uh, is the ends with method. Now, uh... This uh, ha takes a suffix, which is, in this case, a string, and also, as well, it takes um, an optional start and an end. Um, and, but again, we're not going to talk about that because it's really quite simple to understand. 
uh, by default the start is the beginning of the string and the end is the end of the string. So actually although it searches alerts the ends with method which is supposed to you know by uh, uh, by definition it should search just you know the end of the string but you can't really define the end of the string. The computer can't define it anyway. We might be able to but the computer can't. So in fact it searches the whole string but basically you supply the suffix and say for instance I supply the ld which would be the end of wald and I run it, it returns true if that's at the end of uh, the string although if I supply it something like uh, ll there is no ll at the end of the string, there is an ll in the middle of the string but there's no ll at the end of the string so if you wanted to get to the end LL, you'd have to do this. You'd have to search for this whole string. Okay, and that works because, uh, like I said, it by definition it's a, it should search the end, but it can't define the end. So it just searches from the end backwards. Okay. Uh, now along the same lines as the ends with method. Whoops. Is the one sec? Is the starts with method and this is uh, just the opposite of ends with it searches from the left to the right as opposed to from right to left um, but instead of supplying a suffix again you supply a prefix and it also takes an optional start and end uh, so I'm not going to cover that it's really simple it's basically you can guess it out okay uh, so then the final one we have is the find method Okay, so this takes a substring, and what it does is if it finds something, then it returns the index of uh, the first occurrence it finds. So say we said uh, find L. I know that's not really an entire string, but uh, it will work for this purpose. And we ran that. It gets, whoops, I put a hash at the end by accident. Uh, it gets, it gives us two, and then if we index my string two, we should find an L, okay, as expected. If we said my string dot find uh, L L O and ran that, that should again be two. And if we look my string dot uh, whoops my string prefix from two then two plus the width which is three, uh, that will be this will be a sort of algorithmic way I guess you could call it. We get L L O, okay so there you can see it in action properly uh, so and if it doesn't find it if we do my string dot find uh, booga booga it get we get a minus one so uh, if you're doing checks we haven't covered checking you know like if statements and stuff yet but if uh, just for the future when you're doing checks you don't check uh, to see if it's false, because false um, is any number apart from, uh, sorry, is zero. Any number that's not zero is true, even a minus number, so minus one would actually give a true value. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that now, because that's not for this tutorial. Uh, but anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll be covering the other five methods uh, that that I actually think are important. There are a whole bunch more. I will probably provide either a whole list of them, of all of them, or I'll provide a link to the Python website which have a list of all of the uh, string methods. Anyways guys, over and out.